What up, guys? Well, I, uh, if you saw my last video, took this thing for a spin and, uh, well, ripped the rear suspension right out of it. Holy! 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 Lower links came right up the frame, so it was super rusty, super buggered, and uh, she's done now. So the main, one of the main reasons I bought this thing is to take the EFI off of it and throw it on the Pathmaker rig, because that's only a TBI one. So if you've got a 87, 88, 89 Pathy, uh, and you can get your hands on a parts finder, then you could do the same thing. This is the EFI setup. So I think there's 28 horsepower, something like that stock. And then I've got cams in it anyways. So this is 30, 40 horsepower. I gotta get a tune. Uh, so should be good. And I got all the parts sitting here. So I'm gonna pull it apart and uh, box it all up and may as well do some filming while we do it. Have a bit of a list. These are the, uh, these are the things that I need for the uh, TBI. Uh, so the in, so the intake, the fuel injectors, the air box, and all the plumbing. I got to take the full wiring harness out of the thing. Um, I got to get the uh, dash pod, the gauges, um, mass airflow sensor, which will come with the all of the piping and the uh, O2 sensor off of it and the speed sensor out of the trans. So a few things to pull off. Lubed them all up the other day. So just gonna grab this bad boy, spin them out. I got the bag of Ziplocs, cause uh, easiest way if you're doing something like this, as you pull a part off, you throw it in a Ziploc bag labeled into your bucket. So you don't have a huge bucket of bolts. At least you got a bit of an idea. Each component will uh, go in one bag. Keep it a little bit more organized for my really really poor memory when I have to put this all back together on the Pathmaker. So first thing I pull off, air box, it's three bolts, uh, everything else comes with it so that'll be easy to uh, put back together. I'll probably do some sort of cold air intake on the uh, Pathmaker but for now I just want to grab all the parts that I need so I uh, have an easy time putting it back together into the bucket. Next up, I'm gonna uh, rip some of these wires out of the way and then yank that intake off, toss it in the bucket, and onwards and upwards. I think I gotta get the throttle cables too. Not 100% sure on that, but uh, for what it's worth, I'm gonna pull them off because it would really annoy me if the other ones were uh, different length. So keep those. If you've never taken these kind of uh, plugs off before, they can be a bit of a pain if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, this stupid little wire holds them on there. So easiest way I find is just with a knife and you just pop them like that. As soon as you pop it, it uh, kind of gets out of the groove, pops off like nothing. And you can just snap that back in for uh, when I put the plug back on. So uh, sucks trying to pry pull wires out break plastic so you just got to be careful they're like every damn plug on these things is completely different than the other ones so uh some of them you can squeeze some of them are you know they're a pain in the ass i hate it <laughs> thankfully it looks like these ones are all squeezable ones which is good and i love things that stay attached because i don't have to worry about them later Well, I got most of the bolts off the uh, main part of the intake here. Something's hooked on in the back, so I gotta figure that out. But I'll uh, have this up and out in a second. And then it'll be a lot easier to uh, see the fuel rails and uh, everything. So, winner, winner, boys. Got this thing all ready to come off. Got all the hoses off. And, uh,. It should be, she's burning a little rich. Gonna be wanting to clean those a little bit. Not that much, cause uh, I'm pretty lazy. So I yanked the uh, fuel rails off, both of them. There's one more electrical connection on the back. 
got to pop this pin. Uh, I got to take these four off, but they weren't uh, coming very easily. They're part of the main harness. So, uh, but intake's pretty much off of it. I got to, of course, pull uh, the manifold off, intake manifold, because this one, as far as I know, looks way different than the uh, TBI one. So another, oh, it looks like they mixed, they got four Allen key and four 12 mil, 10 mil. Pretty much everything's been 10 mil so far. Spun out pretty easy. Um, once you, when you pre-soak everything, it usually comes apart pretty decent. So this is the last piece I gotta pull off of here. Distributor come out and uh, into the electrical stuff. Well, since I seem to take months to do every project, uh, this is where we left it last time. I'm uh, right at the point where I gotta pull the intake manifold off. If you're doing this and you care about the motor, you don't really want the yellow uh, orange gaskets to drop down in there. But uh, since I couldn't care less and this block is going, I don't really care. I'm just, uh, however I can, like I see little uh, pine needles falling in the fuel injector hole. Uh, that'd be real bad if I was uh, not just yanking this all out and scrapping it. So hopefully these crusty bolts are gonna loosen off without too much difficulty. We're gonna uh, find out real quick. Of course, when you uh, break your Allen, your socket allen head you get to do fun things like put the pair of pliers on the end of the allen key to try to pop the bolts thankfully that wasn't so bad sketchy working around here with half-ass tools sorry my life so deeper and deeper we go i uh popped off the upper rad hose this uh valve cover vent hose Put the uh, fuel rails over there. Sweet. Well, I think I got everything free enough that I can pull this intake mani off. Uh, of course, there's uh, studs in the uh, end of the block, so it's always a little harder to get off. Oh. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Looks good. Gaskets even look good. Happy with that. Woo, she's a crusty block down there. But, uh, so I need a couple more things on here, but I am, uh, I'm winning. So, pretty much got everything you need off the motor. Uh, just took off the thermostat housing and uh pipe that runs through intakes off i still got to pull the distributor out bolts are stupid tight um so i started working on the wiring harness and took all the uh screws out of the fuses and relays and then of course it goes through in there i'm gonna have to yank the dash out uh inside to get that stuff off which is a drag uh, to get the rest of the electrical stuff out like someone's barbecuing some steaks out here i'm jealous so next mission we uh gonna have to pull the seat out of this thing because the ecu is under the passenger front seat and i need the bundle of wires that goes in that chase and I also got to pull the uh, dash out because I need the gauge cluster and I need the main harness that runs all the way through there and there's no way of doing it with uh, the dash in. Well, thankfully somebody had the seat out before too because between this uh, sweet little Makita and uh, the bolts came out like nothing. So there we are boys, ECU, that's the brains of the unit. So uh, we need that and everything attached to it. Well, there's one nice thing about uh, taking something apart that you don't care about ever putting back together again. You just start uh, loosening screws off until you found them all. I think I found them all. Seems to be catching on one thing over there. So, uh, almost got the dash out and uh, who knows which screws I took off. I found the culprit.
Oh yeah. Get the stink water out of the way. Dash removal. Jeep finder style. Well, bonus to not having a windshield on the thing. It's much easier to pull the dash out and also get this uh, main heating duct out of the way. So there's the wire I need. Almost out. This never ending EFI removal project continues. Look at the size of that wiring harness. That's insane. I think I've got everything I need off of here. Now I can get rid of this damn thing. And...